since you came along. I can face the morning and welcome back once again it is the show the super breakfast show right here on super screen television i am kiruka ebay before the break uh, we are looking at the pandemic of the covid 19 and it cannot be overemphasized. i mean everybody has to take precautionary measures so to help us have the Top, um, the discussion this morning we have in the studio Dr. Alabi Olumuewa. He's a medical practitioner. Doctor, you're welcome to the studio. Thank you very much for having me on the program. You're welcome. And we have um, Dr. Dayo Kayode. He is um, an aviation safety specialist and also a political analyst. You're welcome to the show, sir. Yes, uh, good morning, Ikeruka. No political analyst. Political, political technocrat. technocrat. Yeah. Okay. There are two different things. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mm. So we are looking at the pandemic of the COVID-19. I mean, everybody has to really be aware of it. It's on the rise in our country today. So, I mean, since the whole thing started, Doctor, it has... I think there's been a lot of misinformation about it. People go about and do what it, whatever they want. You have fake news everywhere. People telling you do this, do this, do the other one. And nobody knows what is actually the right thing to do. Can you, I mean, throw more light on this. Educate us a little bit on it. Okay, thank you very much, uh, my viewers at home. I'm Dr. Labiolo Muewa, and I'm here to really um, say much about what the coronavirus is all about. Um, you know, in the, in, the, in the midst of deception, one of the most powerful tools anybody in the history used in, in the midst of deception is you go the half truth and on that way you just join in on, on the falsehood in which people you are carrying along will not even be able to know what is coronavirus. Coronavirus COVID-19 we're talking about is a, is a constellation of so many groups. A, there are so many viruses under that. It's a large group family. And in medical parlance, we call it coronavirus family in which we have seven strains of these viruses. Four of them, we have four human illnesses that we know of these coronaviruses. Four of them are the, we, they have mild symptoms of common code, where we have human coronavirus, ML, cystitary, CK43. We have so many codes about that. Four of them just limit themselves at the upper respiratory tract infection, where you just have a common cold, sore throat, and it's, it's, it's like that. But the three major strains, is the one that we are talking about in which this COVID-19 falls into. And what is COVID-19? Co the CO stands for Corona, stands for Corona. The VI stands for virus and the that D stands for disease. So we have Corona virus disease. That 19 just goes to show that we first noticed it in history in December 31st, 2019 in, in a city called Wuhan, where we have a sea pork um, and seafood poultry market where that thing really spread out and that is what the coronavirus is all about now it is a new strain because we have not heard about it we have two before in 2002 we have um, the SARS that is the severe acute respiratory syndrome in 2002 and uh, that one you know we can call that uh, endemicity though it's cut across from Europe and it was limited at that time then in 2012 we have another one we call it MAS and that is Middle East respiratory syndrome that one broke out in Saudi Arabia and that was also limited, and that is also endemicity. Now, when you say something is endemic, it goes to show that it is just it's a geographical limitation. But pandemic, there is nothing, there is no, the, the word pandemic just means ge geographical terminologies. Talking about that, it has spread out across the whole world now. Now, just all the seven continents have been affected presently, and that is the pandemicity of coronavirus 19. So, like, um, has, there hasn't been any confirmed treatment to this virus. I mean, there's been a lot of search. They even came up with, um, they said, I think in the U.S., they said chloroquine can actually help, or they are testing chloroquine. How, what do you have to say to this? Is there really any uh, cure to this? Just like anybody in the medical field knows that viruses does not really have cure. And uh, in, in a layman, when you talk about computer, computer has, uh, this computer has virus. What did they do? They killed the virus. They killed the computer by wiping out everything there. But unfortunately, human being cannot be killed because you want to eradicate the virus. So to answer your question, there is no cure. There is no no cure. In fact, there is no no vaccine. 
Now, when Donald Trump made a statement about uh, hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine, as it used to say, it's not. It's just talking about you know. Is a is a try. Chloroquine has propped up even in the in the days of 2002 when we have SARS, when we have MERS, it has propped up. Then that uh, it can it can do wonders. But researchers have found out that um, what we killed using chloroquine to kill that virus, we mean that we killed the woman being because we would have surpassed the therapeutic index. <laughs> what we killed that virus, we also killed the. You have to use a very high dosage that human being cannot even contain. So it is not true, and it can be true. We had so many cases of people ordering it. Now I even heard that it is that even gone so expensive. It's very expensive. And most of those drugs they even men made mention of. There is one they they, they, they use for the polyarthritis. Ather there is one they use for systemic lupus erythematosus. All those ones have been used over time, and there is no no cure. They are only trying to see whether it can really have an effect on this thing. So what is but uh, what is the, the major thing we have to, I have to say here that is very very instructive is that uh, Ebola or you know we just like in four or two three years ago even some few months ago we were talking about Ebola coronavirus COVID nineteen we, we 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 are talking about is not as fatalistic as Ebola so which what I what I mean by the, the fatalistic that means the death, the, the, the chance that is going to cause death in a human being is not is very, very limited. But you have a, t a thousand and one people dead in Italy already. Of course, anybody can die of anything. But when, you, when you compare it to the number of uh, the affected, you know that it's like minus whatever percent. Even the, 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 it doesn't have that potential. If quickly managed, mm -hmm. that's the word. Because in, in virus, you treat the symptoms. If the person is showing fever, you treat the fever. If the person is showing pain, you treat the pain. If there is dehydration, which we, we treat, we, we readied the patient and allow the virus to run its course, just like Ebola too. Yeah. So it is not as fatal. That means if you have 100 people being affected by this disease and they are promptly attending to medically, two or one of them will just will die. Or even none. Oh, yes, know. because in Nigeria currently there's one death so far, and then the case is at 81. So, um, Dr. Dyer, you know, the government has been harping on people adhering to instructions, stay at home, take precautionary measures. How do you, I mean, rate the adherence rate in Nigeria? Yes, uh, thank you, Ikiruka. Uh, looking at the adherent rate now to government instructions, I have to first of all give kudos to so many Nigerians that are staying at home because if you drive on the streets of Lagos now, you're going to see that the traffic is like less than 3% of what it's supposed to be, okay? But then government should, should go beyond that because in, Niger in Nigeria, and especially Lagos, you have a lot of people that earn their, their pay daily. There is nothing they can do without going out. And these guys got to pay for electricity, they got to buy credit on their phone, they got to be on the internet, they got to do this, they got to do that. So to that extent, I think government should also come up with what I now call uh, uh, social, social intervention by some of these... Uh, by some of these... Uh, um, uh, what I call it, like Airtel, uh, MTN, uh, PHCN, and all that. Let them give out free, free data for people to be able to, you know, stay at home. Because when you have data on your phone, you'll be able to get information. When you have uh, uh, credit on your phone, you'll be able to make calls to find out what is happening to this and that. Then also, when you have light you'll be able to be glued to your TV so that the house will not be boring and all that. But having, having said that, I want to be, I want to go a little bit uh, different from what uh, uh, Dr. Alabi had said as regards uh, 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 emergence of uh, COVID-19. COVID is COVID, it, co COVID, it COVID-19? Okay, COVID-19. <laughs> COVID-19. Yes, sir. You see, either anybody likes it or not, the truth of the matter is this. This thing came up as a sort of economic warfare. Okay? okay. It is nothing other than biological warfare. Let us say the truth here. 
It is nothing other than bi biological warfare. How, how will it break out in, uh, in uh, Wuhan? And you are not seeing it in Shanghai. Alright? You are not seeing it in Beijing. How come even the president of China came out wearing mere, mere mask, okay? And then walking around that place without anything happening to him. So you see, there is a kind of an economic warfare between China and the U.S. Let me remind you, there was a time, there was a time about a year ago or there about when Trump came up and said, look, I got to get America back for the Americans. Because they found out that China was making a hell of money out of America. And he introduced some trade tariff. Yes. You remember? He introduced some trade tariff. Meanwhile, China retaliated. But it didn't work. And China looked at it, okay, what do I do? I can't fight these people militarily because they have that military might. So what do I do? I got to weaken their defenses. I do weaken somebody's defenses. Economically, you can weaken somebody's defenses. So, Look how so to in other words, you're trying to say that the COVID-19 is man-made? Man-made. Man-made. Nothing but man-made. It is about, it is about what I call probably uh, 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 third world war. Why, why, is it, why is it not in, in those, those, those countries that are allies to China, like USSR, I mean, uh, uh, Russia? Why is, why is it not there? Okay? So these are issues we, we, we all need to look at critically. We, we all need to go into what I call economic insurgency, counterinsurgency. For us to be able to understand this. But, but, my, my own grouse with our own government is this. They acted rather very, very late. Because this thing has been on since, let's even say January. It became so pronounced in January. Now, when you saw this, you, you, you yourself, you know how, how vulnerable Nigeria is in terms of facilities to handle this if you should get to Nigeria. You didn't act. You were looking. You were just watching. Not until when some people are now entered the country, you're now locked up. Even the leaders are, even the people that enter the country, what happened to them? For instance, look at Iku's son. He came in and he started gallivanting all, 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 all around. Is he supposed to do that? And even, even to the extent of attending rally in Ibadan, Know fully well that you are going to be among the crowd. Now look at where we are now. But who you, pays? Who pays the? Who pays for the broad? You know that the whole the uh, COVID nineteen when you, you don't show symptoms immediately. Exactly. Right, doctor. It's supposed. It's supposed. It's supposed. The government had already said when you are coming from overs, first of all, go and keep yourself for fourteen days. This guy came. He did not. Not until, according to the news, when the sister cried out. Even look at, even look at uh, Abakiari. It, you went to Germany for even what is not even your duty. For the, a duty that is meant for a minister. You came back, instead of you to keep yourself somewhere, you started gallivanting up around, including even hugging a uh, Kogi state governor. Yes, you know, at this point, I think it's spreading in Nigeria. I mean, the point now is... What do we do to curtail it, to make sure that it doesn't spread? It's at 81 so far. I'm sure before uh, you know, it's, it, the number will keep rising. So what do we do to really prevent it so that everybody don't get it? Because if Nigeria gets a high uh, rate of it, um, I, I don't know what's We are happen. too vulnerable because we don't even have the facilities. In, in so the what place, can we do? Not, what we should do has been stated clearly so far, and all of us know what to do. But the question is, how adherent are we to be about all these things? Just like what my colleague said. You see, it is, they acted rather late. This thing became so pronounced. In fact, the whole of January, the whole of February, we have all the time to really prepare ourselves. But you know, just like in our normal culture of... <laughs> of you know, insipidity. Things, of living things as it's... Just like... No, there is no... In fact, as, even the issue of contact tracing... We are begging everybody that if you know you go there, just try to isolate yourself. Are we supposed to be at that stage of begging or enforcing? enforcing. 
Yes, because even now, if this is fast flow, flow, not flow, a range of things. Back to their look, homes. look, look yeah. at what look at what the president of uh, Putin look at what Putin said. He said you either isolate yourself for fourteen days, or if you are caught, you go for five years jail. We have to be that. He drastic. said we will send alliance to capture you. We have to be that drastic. So we have to be drastic in this in not handling it with the and uh, this issue of COVID. There is there is even a COVID checklist. And the major point was given to three parameters. That is, if you if you have a recent travel, you isolate yourself. Yeah. If you have any contact with person tested positive, you isolate, isolate yourself. yourself. If you have a contact, if you are if you travel to a country that is well known for COVID, isolate yourself. So I don't know why you know we still then even when you have the symptoms like running nose, coughing, and all that, still isolate yourself. So is is yeah, a, so a major what problem. are the things that we can do? Because the government has been hammering on it, isolate yourself, cover yourself, wear this, wear that. What are these things? Well, that as we individual, be doing? what we need to do is um, one. First of all, I I want to salute people who are wearing face masks, and that's a bold step in Nigeria because <laughs> going against the culture here yeah, is, is 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 an appalling task, and also changing our greeting style too. I really want, especially in Yoruba land where greeting is, is so vital. So I want, I want to give it to them. But there's something I want to say here. That the issue of wearing of hand gloves, I totally against it by anyone. Okay. Now, wearing of hand gloves will give you a false rule that you are protected. But where, where you are touching surfaces, you are touching your phones with it, you are touching your clothes with it, spreading that in fast. So what you need to do is that anybody with um, the with wearing of hand gloves, in fact, I, just like I said, I, I said that if, I want to make an hyperbolic statement by saying it should be criminalized because you have that sense of falsehood of protection when we are spreading that in so fast. So the issue of washing of hands, so that person will look not and void. I don't need to wash my hands since pro I'm protected. So that should not be done. So when you know hand gloves should be seen with anyone. Except the health workers. And if an health worker, if you are wearing this thing, how many hand gloves are you going to use? That means for each patient, you change it. That's the idea. Or if you know you don't have that capacity, what you need to do is that for each patient, wash your hand. I think that is rather cheap. So the issue of hand gloves should be totally banned. And I don't really, um, really from the technical point of view, now, should see, not be encouraged. And another thing, I want, sorry sir, that I really want to say is the issue of this uh, wearing of um, nose mask, mm -hmm. the face, face mask. mask. People are wearing it wrongly. Of course, when you're in theater, that's the way we, we wear it. You know, the, the popular one, I mean to say, that's one with green and white parts. You know, when we're in the theater, we put the, they see the, the green part outside. We put the white part inside. And the idea about that is that the white part is the filter part. That is, we, we, we believe that our patients are supposed to be sterile and we don't want to throw our breathing or anything. In fact, our surgical patients. But when you are outside now, in this kind of, in, in this case of pandemic, that you don't want to get something infected. So you put the filter part outside. outside. So in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is that if you want to wear this popular face mask, put the white part outside. Just like if even some hospitals are not even um, aware about this, I was correcting well, some of is, them. You see, my, 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 sorry, my own, my own, this thing that we can do fast at this one. I was watching uh, one particular station about two weeks ago or so, and I saw China, you know, trying to fumigate the whole of China through aircraft. We have enough helicopters and all that in this country. Especially in Lagos, uh, Ogun, Ekiti, and all those states that this thing had spread, we can afford to fumigate. Yes, I, I think the Lagos the, state government is already. That is the, the only the only deed out of uh, national stadium because they want to use that place as uh, isolation, which is place. which is good enough. But then let us fumigate the whole atmospheric environment. That is one. Two, then all the money that some people are trying to put down for for as a as a Relief cushion as a cushion effect and all that they shouldn't let people pocket them again just as they pocketed some that are meant for idps and all that okay then also also there are some facilities that has also that have been donated by some organizations i know that of uh, i think gtb or so and then some other individual and all that. 
let them use all those areas judiciously. Then most especially the, the, the information dissemination through electronic and, uh, and uh, print media, we should also step it up. And then ensure that we encourage people there are some things you do that government can do because this time around it is about the government and social responsibilities it is about some some companies that are making a hell of money here and social responsibilities let us look at some other things that we can do to encourage people to stay at home yes and looking at the okay the um, finance minister uh, Zainab Ahmed she said the with at the rate at which this is going the nigeria economy will go into a recession in the next six months even even I mean, even, even when that's like a, even, <laughs> even when there is no even when there is no covid one and nine covid 19 i think we have not been handling our economy the way we should be handling it let me give you just an an aspect of it look at our crude oil that we always take abroad to, to, to purify, okay? Even you, as a journalist, have you ever asked, after, after, after bringing in uh, uh, PMS, AGO, and kerosene, how about all that 11, 12 derivatives there? Where have they been putting it? These are things that suppose, we're supposed to have used to kickstart our economy from the onset. Where are they? What are they doing about it? Whether Corona or no Corona, we are not we are not seeing we are not seeing economy prosperity in Nigeria despite all the resources that we have. We have those resources; they are there. But then, but then, uh, the good news is this: in every development, there's always a problem. I hope the vision. I mean, our leaders we allow that that. Uh, uh, fluorescent on their head to light up now because of what we are facing. Then for them to be able to become visionary people instead of just uh, uh, an, an armchair, armchair leader. Moving that, with that, that, I mean, they should, they should henceforth look outside the box and ensure that Nigeria gets to its position within the community of nations. And one of the mo most interesting things at this stage is People who are affected are the most of them are the cream dollar cream of the society, and unfortunately, you know the normal thing, the normal usual thing is for them to go abroad and go to the medical facilities. But unfortunately, now Wait. the medical facilities are abroad. Stuck here. Ah, where, how about when? Are you sure some are people they? are not going now without you knowing? Are you sure some people are not using diplomatic? Diplomatic they, level they, 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 to leave this country. They diplomatic or dipl not eh? diplomatic? They are overwhelmed over there. Even they though, even, yeah. even there. though, are you sure? Are you sure some people are not using diplomatic uh, level to... We're looking at this whole yeah. thing from a medical point of view right now. How do you think it can be stopped, curtailed at this point in time? Uh, just like what I, 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 I've been saying, that is a personal hygiene, good personal hygiene. Very important, the use of um, face masks, not wearing your gloves. Just make sure you are washing your hands very, very well. In fact, and you must wash it for over 20 seconds. So that by, because we believe that the virus is being um, enveloped with a lipid layer, and such lipid layer can be quashed and killed within that foam of this um, soap. And more importantly, another issue of hand sanitizer, people have been about alcohol base, alcohol base, and some people have even gone to the issue of um, drinking a lot of ogogoro <laughs> that <laughs> as the, in the local parlance. So, hand sanitizer, at least, the, the, the major thing there is that the ingredients, it must be more than 60% to 90% of alcohol. And I don't think we have any alcohol, drinkable alcohol, that is up to that. <laughs> the maximum alcohol I've seen that is drinkable, consuming, but I think it's 44, 45, or 46 percent. 47. 47 percent, okay. So we don't have any, even 47 percent cannot kill that virus. So people drinking alcohol, drinking themselves to stupor, is, the, is one of those myths that we must correct. So please and please, the hand sanitizer that we must use must contain alcohol. That is most effective, and that can kill that one. And we say, oh, that is, we prefer hand washing with soap. If we don't say that, we can use 
the hand sanitizer, which is alcohol based. That is very, very important. That's one of those myths in which we have to correct. Yes. Then another thing we have to correct is the issue of, you know, it's not easy touching your hand. You know, we are you know, this and then we have direct or indirect contact. I must say that. And indirect contact is the issue of sneezing or coughing. That is, if the person is infected, if, just like you rightly said, before the person shows symptoms, it will get to four, five days, six days before the person starts showing symptoms. And before the, it gets to the respiratory symptoms, it might get to six, seven days. Then at that stage, the person is most effective. Not that, even without you showing symptoms, you can still transmit it, but at a very, very minimal stage at that point in time. So what we need to do is that anybody that is showing the symptoms, we give one meter to two meter distance. And uh, if the person wants to cover or sneeze, there must be what you call respiratory etiquette, cough etiquette, by using your elbow, okay. the bend of your elbow to really cover it. And if you must use the, any tissue paper, immediately you do that, you throw it off. And if you are using handkerchief, by the time you sneeze into it, I use that handkerchief to touch another person or anyway, you are still infecting it or you put it inside your pocket and somebody is watching it without, you know, it's a very, very, very technical thing. And very that is why, thing. And, and that is why we need really, you know, pick up the sense too. Okay. And that's why we need multidisciplinary approach to solve this. It's beyond even medical. We also need sociologists, psychologists yeah. and geographers. So continuous to come, sensitization. To come together to come together and then and then develop a particular uh, uh, concept to approach this. Even though we are looking at it from the medical point of view, then we have to also look at it, how will people absorb these medical uh, uh, activities that are being suggested, like social, social activities and the mingling with people. Accept, accept, acceptability of uh, what is being uh, ad, uh, what you are being addressed with and all that you know so it, we also we need to put in a team of multi multi disciplinary yeah people you yes. know team to be able to solve this issue now you've had it first hand from a medical perspective so thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the show this morning. Thank you very and much. And I hope we can me. do this again because people need to be sensitized yeah, more and more. more. Yeah. So thank you, Dr. Dayo, and uh, thank, thank you. you for having me. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. So we'll go on a short break, and when we return, the program continues. Don't go away. So since you came along, I can face the back once again and we have been talking about the COVID-19. It cannot be overemphasized but you watching you have to also take precautionary measures. I mean we can talk about it, the government can talk about it but it is you who has to take these measures and that is why a lot of meaningful Nigerians they are coming out and making donations. A real estate company Oxford Group Nigeria has also joined all the well-meaning Nigerians and they are contributing their quota to this fight against the pandemic COVID-19. They are giving out 10,000 naira each to over 500 families in Alimosho local government area of Lagos State and then they are going to be going house to house and in LCDAs. So if your LCDAs LCDA has to be among these places they are going to go. Just be rest assured that you're going to be getting a relief fund of 10,000 Naira from Oxford Group Nigeria, as well as all the meaningful Nigeria who has also contributed towards this fight against the COVID-19. And that is the much you can take on the program this morning. I hope to an extent you have understood that wearing of hand gloves does not necessarily stop you from getting the virus. No, it doesn't. Always make sure that you wash your hands properly and regularly with soap and when you can't find soap use hand sanitizers this things work if we adhere to these instructions the government does their own part we do our own part i think to an extent we're all going to be safe so you stay safe and stay home till we come your way again next week i am kiruka ebay thank you for watching good morning beautiful how was your night